A clear call for a drastic change. That's the message Americans seem to have sent by electing Donald Trump the president of the United States. Let's dig a little deeper into what this bold new era could promise to the nation and the world. To help us make sense of it, we have Professor Kim Taehyun from Chungang University with us here. Thank you for joining us today, Professor. Thank you for having me. First of all, it's seen as a shocking ups. I understand you lost some sleep right. over it as well. Uh, many analysts perceive it will be Hillary Clinton, the logical mm -hmm. and sound choice. Right. But clearly the cohesiveness and drive of those who see eye to eye with Trump's radical style, uh, it was quite overwhelming. What can we take from this development? Well, I mean, Donald Trump read the people's minds, particularly those who have been suffering from the unending globalization, uh, losing their jobs because of international competitions and so on, with uh, uh, blue-collar uh, manufacturing workers around the Rust Belt. So as of yesterday, uh, New York Times, Washington Post, all established uh, mass media pred predicted that Hillary Clinton's win by winning those states like Wisconsin, Mi Michigan, and Pennsylvania, while losing Ohio, North Carolina, and Florida to Trump. But Trump won those, those uh, uh, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania, which are widely represented the Rust Belt. So Rust Belt really matters in these elections. Right. Other than winning those uh, key states, the silent majority, as they would call it, prevails, and some would say. Uh, most polls had numbers stacked against Trump. Mm. So tell us more about how these uh, unsung heroes uh, developed or contributed to Trump's success. Well, I mean, we are, have been observe, observing a kind of a worldwide phenomena which you may call it Trumpism, okay? We have observed that in the Britain when they voted for right, Brexit. Brexit. I mean, those people are against uh, the fallout of globalization. They have to accept migrants uh, and uh, refugees, and uh, they thought that they are losing their jobs to international competitions, and that brought into the United States as well. I mean, so as people, some, some, some uh, uh, perception, Perceptive people already saw that they were not surprised to see Donald Trump rising, but they were surprised that it was taking that late. So, I mean, he really correctly read that. But, uh, I mean, Donald Trump's behavior was so erratic and we could not, I mean, hardly acceptable. That's why people have hidden their voices when they are asked who they are supporting. Right. So that they want to sound they, like a right. sane person. Right. They, everybody was, I mean, so surprised that the, the late uh, poll shows that Hillary Clinton was still leading, but the result was the opposite. So there was a sign of voices. Even they are saying, oh, I can't vote for a person like Donald Trump, but actually they did, because so they are unhappy with the establishment. And Hillary Clinton is really representing the political establishment that they felt they are not, she's not feeling their own desire and uh, dissatisfaction and so on. Right, fueled by the anger and disappointment of right. the people that helped Trump fly the plane. It's taken flight, now it's landing that's the problem once it's in charge of the country. <laughs> right. uh, let's look at some of its track record. The reality show star grabbed headlines for grabbing women allegedly. Mm -hmm. And of course there were extreme uh, sexist and racist remarks that he had talked about. How can he repair those uh, damage that his image, which, been, which has been damaged with all these remarks. By winning the election <laughs> and sitting in the, in the Blue House, our office will make him look like a president, really. And instead of uh, uh, speaking out of his, his, his belly, he the better read from the prompter. And I think over time he will repair his images. As, I, I had that kind of uh, experiences before that sometimes when I saw the American president candidate, I didn't think that he had a presidential look. But once he was uh, elected, and I thought, oh, this guy has a presidential look. So he may have taken expectation, but already in his uh, uh, remarks or right. uh, speeches, he was speaking to the, pub, the people, uh, the nation, that he will work for the entire nation, not for a uh, faction of the nation and so on. So He's like he, a different person from the right. person who was running, running for the, running yeah, for the I campaign. So he became the different person once he became the president. Well, uh, really? w hope springs eternal that he yeah. is a, a much more different person than what the media has covered right. in terms yeah. of this bad publicity. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about the impact this will have on Korea. He called the uh, Korea US FDA a very flawed deal, mm -hmm. but this was the, uh, the Trump before he was elected right. president, so hopefully he's a little bit different. So he promised to make changes to, to America's advantage. So should we be concerned and how can we be better prepared against the possible drastic changes to come? You know, I mean, there is one thing that you say as a president candidate is one thing, and you say something as president is the other thing. So I would say, I mean, the worry should be less than 
uh, while we had uh, while he was a, a candidate, but still, once he spoke publicly and he appealed to the people who thought they are suffering from the free trade, I think the obvious United States will demand some kind of renegotiation of terms of our uh, chorus FTA. So we should be prepared. And I think, I mean, I think that. Uh, uh, Trump, Mr. Trump was speaking from the general picture, not the detailed picture, but uh, obviously we should have prepared, should prepare some kind of by numbers, by statistics, that uh, course FTA is not a one side uh, winning, the other side losing, but it's more like a win-win solution. We have to prove that by numbers and statistics. I think that our government and other related officials should be ready for that. Right, perhaps uh, Donald Trump will be better informed and educated about the soundness of yeah, the deal. Of course, yeah. Uh, and let's talk about defense. Uh, Seoul Washington Defense Alliance, uh, things could shape up a little differently because he kept emphasizing that, that the U.S. is taken advantage of with, uh, with uh, defense cost sharing. Right. Will we see some drastic changes in that area? Well, that concerns me the most, uh, given that North Korea has been doing such kind of provocative actions recently, this, this year in particular. I mean, it may destabilize RK U.S. bilateral alliances a little bit. Obviously, I think he will demand uh, some change in uh, renegotiation of uh, defense burden sharing with ROK. And what, I makes, what makes me worry, really worry is that uh, we will have election on own election uh, for sure next year, maybe earlier, so it depends on our circumstances. And very likely we will have a president from uh, progressive parties. Right. So they combine the U.S. demand and so on, it may destabilize in the context, on the one hand, North Korea is prov doing provocative actions. On the other hand, you know, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, China relations are getting worse. So that really makes me worry. But we have a previous experiences. In 1976, uh, President Jimmy Carter was elected on the platform that he would withdraw the U.S. force of Korea. But given the own international constraint, as well as Thomas constraint, he withdrew that one. So I think that once he became president and he realized that how the United States is locked up with the rest of the world, let's say 192 other members of the United Nations, and also domestically there are so many institutions, military and state department, all others are also locked up, then I think he may have developed more balanced perspective on the importance of a bilateral alliance. Right, so right. Now the ball is on Donald Trump's court, whether he will disappoint those who voted for him for his drastic promises, right. or if he will become a more normal, stable president that he is expected to become once he's at that position. Thank you so much for your time, okay. Professor Kim Tian. We look forward to having you back here again someday soon. Okay.